the muscular system. Without the muscular system, not only would we not be able to move, but we wouldn't be able to breathe or digest our food. Over 85% of the body heat is produced by muscle contraction. There are over 640 muscles in the body. They attach to bones through tendons and make up almost half of the body's total weight. Muscles never push. Their movement is of a pulling nature and just about all of their motion is a result of some kind of contraction. Muscles are classified as either voluntary, which means they can be controlled by thought, or involuntary, which means they act independently and are controlled by autonomic nervous system. There are three basic types of muscles, smooth, skeletal, and cardiac. Smooth muscle is found in the walls of the blood vessels and tubular organs such as the stomach, intestines, and uterus. Smooth muscle contraction is involuntary under the control of the autonomic nervous system and hormones, and their cells are spindle-shaped with one central nucleus. Cardiac muscle, as the name implies, is the muscle that makes up the walls of the heart, also known as the myocardium. It's unique in that it has one central nucleus, like smooth muscle, and yet it's striated like skeletal muscle. The contraction of the cardiac muscle is strong, rhythmic, and involuntary. Skeletal muscles are the muscles that hold the bones of the skeleton together and are under the nervous system's voluntary control. Skeletal muscles are composed of long muscle fibers with striped markings called striations, each acting independently of neighboring muscle fibers. Skeletal muscles act in pairs, called flexors and extensors, adductors or abductors, external rotators, internal rotators, etc. Golgi tendon organs are really part of the nervous system, but because they only affect the muscles, we'll discuss them here. Located where the muscle turns to a tendon, Golgi tendon organs are tension recorders that are designed to prevent the muscle from contracting too forcefully and ripping itself from its tendon. If the tendon organ detects excessive overload, it may initiate a spinal reflex that inhibits the muscle, in effect, turning it off. Some massage techniques focus on applying pressure to the muscular tendinous junction with the intention of activating the Golgi tendon organs, thus relaxing the muscle. These techniques apply pressure at the muscular tendinous junction with force towards the muscle belly in short movements. Muscle spindles are another type of sensory receptor in the muscles. Located throughout the muscle belly, muscle spindles are responsible for the stretch reflex. They initiate an excitatory reflex that causes the muscles to contract, thus preventing the muscle from overstretching. They react to both the extent and velocity of the stretch. They are highly sensitive and are important in maintaining posture. The muscle spindles, with their capacity for initiating the stretch reflex, are responsible for the splinting that takes place when a muscle, tendon, or ligament is injured. The muscles surrounding the injury immediately tighten to immobilize the area. While this has an entirely natural and appropriate response of the body, without proper attention to rehabilitation, it often backfires. The splinting reflex, which has acted to protect the injury, can actually reset the proprioceptive resting length of the muscle, leading to long-term hypertonicity and limited range of motion. One bodywork technique that resets the spindle cells is an isometric contraction. This is used in modalities such as muscle energy technique, strain counterstrain, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, sometimes known as PNF, and other techniques. An isometric contraction is where the client tightens the muscle without moving the joint. When they stop, an effect called post-isometric relaxation takes place, meaning that the spindle cells reset and allows the muscle to lengthen even more, to be more relaxed. Another bodywork technique to loosen muscles is called reciprocal inhibition. This means that when a muscle contracts, it tells its opposing neighbor to relax, it inhibits it. To do this, have a client contract the opposite muscle from the one you're trying to relax without moving the joint. After a few seconds, have them relax and you'll notice that the other muscle has relaxed as well. With these two neurological functions, you can see that doing any kind of isometric contraction 
anywhere around where you're working will help all the muscles to relax. Now let's discuss the main muscles of the body. We will cover muscles in their functional groups, meaning we'll look at the muscles in terms of what they do, and to do this, we'll have to start with a joint because the purpose of almost all the muscles is to move a joint. We'll start with ankles and move up. The ankle joint is quite complicated in its action, but the main motion it performs are dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. It can also pronate and supinate. The muscles that perform plantar flexion are the gastrocnemius and the soleus. The gastrocnemius actually attaches to the femur and then to the Achilles tendon. It has two heads. The soleus lies beneath the gastrocnemius, attaches to the tibia and fibula, and assists in plantar flexion. These muscles are tight if your client can't dorsiflex very well. Work on these muscles when someone has Achilles tendonitis or plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is when the plantar fascia on the bottom of the foot is inflamed. You should work the soleus and gastrocnemius because tension here can be part of the tension on the bottom of the foot. The opposing muscle is the tibialis anterior. This muscle attaches to the tibia and its distal tendon actually wraps around the medial border of the foot and attaches to one of the metatarsals. Because of the placement of this attachment, this muscle can also supinate the foot. So work on releasing this muscle in clients whose feet are overly supinated. The opposing muscles to supination are the three peroneus muscles, the peroneus longus, brevis, and tertius. These muscles originate from the fibula. Their action is one of pronation of the foot. Now we'll move on to the knee. The main motions of the knee are flexion, and extension. The muscles that extend the knee are the quadriceps, meaning foreheads. These are big muscles, so their individual names start with the word vastus. The vastus lateralis is on the outside, the vastus medialis is on the inside, and the vastus intermedius is in between, but is not shown here because it's under the fourth quadricep muscle, the rectus femoris. And then all these muscles blend together in the tendon at the patella and finally attached to the tibia. Release these muscles in cases of knee pain. The muscles that flex the knee are the three hamstring muscles and the popliteus muscle. On the inside is the semitendinosus and on the outside is the biceps femoris. Under the semitendinosus is the semimembranosus. Since these muscles attach to the ischial tuberosity, they can pull the hip posterior contributing to back pain. The small popliteus is located just below the joint and helps to initiate flexion of the knee if the knee is straight. Also, the gastrocnemius can assist in knee flexion since it also crosses the knee joint. In looking at the muscles around the hips, we will separate them into the actions of the hips. First, we'll look at the adductor group. This is the large grouping of muscles on the inside of the leg. The pectineus is here, the adductor longus here, adductor brevis here, adductor magnus here. These muscles attach to the bottom along the pubic and ischium bones. There are numerous muscles here and their main action is to adduct the leg or bring it towards the center line. When an adductor muscle is torn, it often is known as a groin pull. The opposing muscles to the adductors are the muscles directly opposite on the outside of the hips. These are the gluteus medius and underneath the gluteus minimus. These muscles pull the leg out. The next grouping of muscles are those that internally rotate and surprise the anterior part of the gluteus medius also does that action along with the tensor fascia lata. Work these muscles if a client's legs are internally rotated, i.e. if they're pigeon-toed. The muscles that externally rotate the leg are located deep in the posterior hip, 